say good morning. Say good morning. <laughs> okay, guys, you need to go out. Yeah, mama's got to clean everything up. Get on outside. <laughs> so, good morning, guys. Welcome to Appalachia's homestead. Welcome to the farm. Oh, I've got an ant now. <laughs> oh, my. Nature. The ant is telling us something. Always remember that. The little, little, busy, busy ant. Be the ant. Do you see them? Oh, here they come. How many we got? They're watching. I think there's four, but don't quote me. Sister, sister, this is not what we do. So guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. I think this is the most important video I could ever make. And it's been convicting. I guess I've been convicted in a sense. Uh, I've really been ha having some um, heartstrings pulled to share this with you. Anytime a video is about what I'm about to talk about, it's sort of a risk taker in a sense for some people. Um, I don't, I'm not concerned about that anymore. I'm more concerned about our hearts and getting through difficult times. So if you were to have one prep in your family right now that you are constantly making sure you have or that you're adding to, this is most certainly it. I'm gonna to try to keep you out of the wind here. So let's keep this short and sweet. So every morning I, I do a devotional. I really try to keep myself on a very specific schedule because it sort of sets the tone for the rest of the day. Um, and I'm really trying to focus on that for 2023. And I do devotionals every single morning. And for the past two days, I have been in a sense, I guess you could call it convicted to share this with you. If you were to make sure that you have one prep in your home. In fact, I'm encouraging you to have multiple. If there is one prep that you are making sure that you are buying for your children or your grandbabies or whoever in your life, this is definitely it. We can talk about preparedness in all realms, food, water, energy, medicine, all of the above. But if we are not spiritually ready for the times that we are entering, in my personal opinion, and the times that we are going through already, then we're nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. I am encouraging you, and um, I've talked to Miss Lou about this. And I, I, let me tell you what she said. Let me let me tell you a little backstory. A couple of years ago, several years ago, I went to church with Miss Lou. I like to go to church with Miss Lou. She um, has a really wonderful church over in snowbird in North Carolina and I enjoy going when I can uh, it's a little bit of a drive for us but we love going and we've participated in a lot of things with her and her church a couple years ago and this was pre-covid I was we were talking and there is a preacher over there who I really really like really really like I don't like things sugar-coated I don't like that I want to be told what I need to hear okay which I think that's why you're, you like to be here on my channel because I kind of try to do that too. Try not to sugarcoat too much. <clears throat> and the, the conversation was, there's going to come a day where you are going to have to have basically memorized as much as you can from the Bible. Obviously, the implication is, is that will you eat, be told that you are not even going to be allowed to own a Bible. Historically, we can talk about these scenarios all day long. So if you're going to say things in the history, th things like that, something like that would never happen or whatever, trust me, you really need to do a history lesson. And it's not just with the Bible, it's how human nature works. When an entity wants control, they're going to take away all measures that leave you self-reliant. God, your ability to grow your own food and to defend yourself. These things have to be wiped out in order to have control of a people, all people, any people. So I was talking to Miss Lou last night about this and I told her that I was making a video expressing these things to you and encouraging you to start memorizing Bible verses. And her response, which has always been her response, and I'm gonna share it here with you, 
she said, tell them to start buying extra Bibles. Tell them to start buying extra Bibles. You know, I'm very fortunate to have a box of Bibles that was given to me that are family heirlooms. And I sat down one day and I went through every single Bible. I, 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 want, I need to do it again in case I miss something, but in these Bibles is a lot of family history that I didn't even really know. There's obituaries and there's, you know, my grandmothers have put things in there and I don't know what they come from. It was maybe a certain doily or it was a, like a plant, that a, a flower that had been dried and preserved. I don't know where these items came from, but I have them. I also have the history that they've written in the Bible, like when they got the Bible or when they donated it, uh, donated a particular, bought a, not donate, but like for example, my great, great grandmother gave a Bible to my great grandmother, her daughter on her 16th birthday. This is my Nana's mom, by the way. And um, on her 16th birthday and wrote her, you know, wrote a little letter to her, if you will, a little paragraph. So it's not just about holding on to your faith, but it's also an opportunity for you to write down really important things, like a journal, certain things that are important to you, keep them with your Bible. Of all the sacred things that you have in your life right now, the Bible, not only for your own spirit, uh, your own spirituality, if you will, your own faith and belief in God and Jesus, but also your family history is there. Some folks are gonna say that I sound like an extremist for saying this, but you know what? We've been called extremists for saying a lot of things that we may have thought or suspected five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So I don't hold any stock in that anymore. I just feel that it's important for us to do what we feel is right. So you know what I've done? I've bought three brand new King James Version Bibles for my three sons. And that's gonna be their Valentine's Day present. I love Valentine's Day just because I think it's a cute holiday to say, just to remind people, you should do it every day, but how much you love them. And I like to give little gesture gifts to my kids and to my Nana, you know, a candle and a little chocolates. And I love, yeah, blah, blah, blah. It just makes people feel good, right? This year I've taken on a different edge. So my sons, all three of my sons, they don't know it yet, obviously. They are each getting an individual brand new, they already have one, but they're getting a brand new King James, really nice Bible. And then I'm gonna give them a little like Russell Stover's heart, cause you gotta have that too. But folks, we're entering a time that many of us have only been told about our whole lives. And I think these things that we I'm gonna use the word fear because I think that's what a lot of people are having. They're having fear. They're having fear about losing their job. They're fearing not having enough food. They have fear about how they're gonna be treated if they go to the hospital. There is fear. And we know, you know here with me that we should have faith over fear. But the number one torch, don't interrupt. The number one torch of light in this whole thing, this whole thing that we're going through, no matter what we're going through. And I have to be reminded too, every day, every day. I try every day. Some days I fail really hard and some days I do really good. But we come back center and we remember what we're supposed to be doing when we open the Bible. You know, what's so funny is before I did this video, I, I knew I was gonna do this this morning. I sort of, I know this sounds silly, but I sort of like had to, I don't want to say Rocky Balboa myself, but you know, anytime you make videos like this, I understand that I'm going to have to put up with some trolls. It's really not an individual in terms of it being a human being. Anybody that's pushing on you to try to talk you down or out of walking closer to God are people that you don't need to be around. And it's people that we don't tolerate here. Times are gonna get very testy. And, and so this morning when I did my devotional, devotionals, I have two books I look at and they're, they are poems or they are stories from the Bible or they are stories of, of a modern day situation. And it talks you through it, you know, you read it and then it talks about, um, you know, God in, in context with it. And then it gives you all kinds of different um, 
scriptures that you can go read and, and stories that you can read directly from the Bible. I really like that. They're nice little studies. And I have two different ones, right? You know what's so funny is one this morning, the first one that I opened up was talking about how you don't know what the day is going to be like. Because we don't. You don't. I don't. I'm trying to make it good, but we got major thunderstorms coming in. What could the day look like? So I've put on my armor of God and I'm reading this devotional and it's reminding me that we can't predict anything in the future and that there's going to be good times and bad times and that we just have to walk close with God and let him and go, okay, whatever it's going to be, I'm trusting what we're doing here. That was the first one and it led you to Ezekiel. One, only one, Usually it gives you two, three, four different places to go in the Bible to read. Today was just one passage in Ezekiel. Nice. I opened up my second one, and it was about praising God in the desert. Goes through all of that about how we are so quick to say thank you and so quick to praise you know, God uh, and say thank you, Jesus, when something good happens or something positive happens just in the nick of time. Do you know what I'm saying? And you say, thank you, Lord. But are we saying, thank you, Lord, in the desert? And do you know where it sent me? Ezekiel. Two different books, totally unrelated, on this day. I find that I, I don't believe in coincidences. So I believe I'm supposed to be here today telling you this. What you do beyond it is your business. But I encourage you, no matter where you are in your walk of faith, even if you're hesitant, if you feel like this is talking to you because it, ta it talks to me, then we need to obey it. And I'm going to tell you another thing. Anytime my elders or my mama or my nana tells me, you really should consider doing this. And you know when that's, they're speaking. You know when it's something, it's like they're saying something, but it's falling down on you also like a beautiful feather floating in the wind then you need to obey it because there's a reason for that. So I encourage you, no matter where you are, who you are, and where you can get one, I don't care if you have 50 Bibles, make it 51 today. Give a Bible. Do something. And make sure you have one in the important places with the important things that you have locked away. Make sure you have one somewhere where no one else can get it. You hold on to that. I'm going to hold on to that. I appreciate you being here. I hope this finds you well this morning. We have lots of storms coming today. In fact, it is so hot right now. I'm going to have to clean the coop in a, January in a t-shirt. So let's pray these storms are safe and you guys are safe. And I love you guys. I appreciate you. Comment down below. We're praying for each other. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for this great nation. Stay the path. This is your number one prep. Don't think different. Like, subscribe, and share, and we will see you guys on the next video.